Hey everybody, Marvin here with Driven by Graphics. I uh, basically have a uh, new SG500 that I just got in and uh, I was going to go through the process and uh, set up and uh, just get started with it. Um, brand new, just unboxed it, uh, pulled all the tape uh, pieces off of it basically. Um, the ink kit itself, I've got the Sublejet um, UHD, this is the, uh, the starter kit that it come with. Um, like I said, just have it unboxed, we'll get it powered on in a second. Um, I will note that once you open up the box, it does have um, instructions just on the cover itself about installing the inks and, uh, and doing that first uh, prior to actually powering it on. So I'll just jump right into it and, uh, and get into it. So I'll come over to the printer itself, um, open up the, the cover, and we'll open up our inks and get them installed. Again, just following the instructions here. Um, I did go ahead and download the uh, VPM or sorry SPM software uh, and I'll go through the installation process of that as well. Uh, that's ultimately the uh, color management software that's utilized by the printer. There's yellow cartridge you're lining up with the colors down here. Black cartridge. And you're wanting to do this before it's actually powered on. Cyan cartridge. Match up with our cyan slot. Magenta cartridge. And then finally the black cartridge. And again, it does have the instruction, like I said, to install this prior, prior to powering on. So very easy to get the cartridges in. Nothing crazy there. I will mention while I have this open, there is a waste tank that um, can be pulled out of the printer itself. This is where when head cleanings happen and whatnot, um, the the ex excess ink that's run through the print heads is basically uh, fed into this uh, container and there is a life to that. It does fill up and it is a replaceable part. So I just want to mention that um, while I've got this open. So I'm going to go ahead and get that closed. Uh, we'll go ahead and load some paper as well. Within the paper tray, one thing that I'll mention is it obviously has the green tab here that this can be slid to adjust for your paper width. And then also it has the, the slider here for your paper length. And a lot of people miss these green tabs here on either side that can be pulled out that allow for this tray to expand for your uh, legal size 8.5 by 14 paper. Um, so that, you know, again, extend that out and then they clip back in here. Uh, to stay out for that paper. Today I'm just going to load letter size paper in here. So I'm just going to leave those tucked in. And I'll move my, it does come with a power cable and USB cable. Just to mention, grab my sublimation paper. Your sublimation paper goes the print side, which should be a brighter white side. Typically there'll be some print um, text or something on the back of. Uh, but the, the print side, if you will, goes face down in the printer because the way it feeds into the printer, it goes uh, towards the back and flips up and then prints on the top and that face. So ultimately, when it goes in the tray, face down is the way that you want to go. I'll get my tray loaded in here. Good to go there. This is the, uh, the paper catch that will be pulled out. And that does have the lid that opens up. Uh, if you ever get a paper jam or anything like that, there's some maintenance that can be done within the printer itself. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get the power connected to it and get it turned on and we'll continue on with the process. Alright, so we're plugged up. We've got power here and go ahead and hit the power button there. Um, once it does get into the uh, process when it's filling inks, a lot of times it'll take up to 
20-ish um, minutes or so uh, to fill the lines within the um, within the printer itself uh, with that. So I'll probably cut away once it begins that and then come back. So uh, that process just speeds up with the video itself. So right now it shows loading ink first time. Wait, do not touch the machine for seven minutes is what it's saying. While it's doing that, we'll go ahead and hop over to the uh, software side, switch over to my desktop. And here I have the uh, Sawgrass website pulled up. Actually, this is the software page. Let me go back. So this is their, the home page, general landing page of the sawgrassinc.com. If you go under get started and then locate print manager, or you can see here the URL just adds the slash software to it. You'll go down here for print manager itself and download for Windows, or there is also a Mac version as well. Um, I believe that's actually system detected and they change there based on your, um, your operating system itself. So we're good to go there. Um, I do have this already in, uh, not installed, but I do have it downloaded. So I have it here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through the install process while our printer is uh, going through the ink loading process. I do not have uh, the um, printer connected in terms of USB to the printer yet. You do want to install the software first. That way it loads all your printer drivers uh, prior to actually connecting to the printer with the USB cable. So I'm just going to double click to begin the process. It's probably going to prompt me for a password because I do have an administrative setting on here. Select your language. Uh, all these are all pre-checked. We're basically going to go through and install everything. This includes some of your .NET framework and some other Microsoft uh, pieces here, virtual printers of the driver and whatnot, and basically uh, to run on system start. So we're going to install everything as default that everything is checked. And obviously it's going to take a minute and the timing of uh, the install process is going to change a little bit based on your system itself and what sort of uh, resources, RAM processor and whatnot that, uh, that you have available. So the process could be quicker. Um, or take a little bit longer. Let me hear in the background, the printer is still going through and loading. And uh, still going through the installation process there. You see the progress bar is going across. Um, would you like to install this device? Yes, absolutely. And it can leave. This is checked by default. Always trust uh, you know, software from Sawgrass. We're going to install. Virtuoso print manager deletion was successful. I actually did have a uh, previous version installed prior to this um, setting up as a new printer. So I went ahead and erased that off. So that's probably why it gave the uh, uninstallation uh, there. Um, now we're completing the print manager setup and we'll go ahead and run the print manager as well. Comes up with our license agreement. We will go ahead and agree to that. And it has uh, here for you to sign in. Um, I actually don't know if I recall my credentials offhand, so I will get those loaded in uh, here in a moment. And uh, just pause the video here. And, uh, and switch back over here in just a moment. Okay, so I just got logged in, entered in my credentials, and uh, and logged in. It prompted me with thank you for doing that, and brought me now to this page, which is the printer settings. Now I have had some previous uh, SG eight hundreds here installed and went through the process, so it detected those. Typically, you'll probably not have anything here, uh, but just on this particular system itself, I have had. Uh, previous printers installed so it you know, shows those so you can enable. I'm going to leave them unclicked here. I'm going to add as a new printer and printer model. Trying to see if it will drop down. It may be actually trying to do a detection. Right, here we go. So here's the 500. I'm going to select. And 
then our ink. We have the Sublajet UHD ink installed. And then we'll click next. So here's the, uh, the Sawgrass driver, the required driver versioning, and we'll just click install to install that print driver. Again, prompt me for my password. That's a window setting that I have. We'll install again. And ultimately, this is, is pretty straightforward to, uh, you know, just click through typical software type installation. Uh, now, here you do have some options. Uh, I'm just going to end up going with the typical USB installation and directly hardwire uh, between my computer and the printer itself. You can connect via Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi option is limited to a 2.4 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi connection. Uh, that's basically the, the limitation within the printer itself. It does not have a 5G uh, 5 gigahertz um, capable Wi-Fi card in it, so you will have to connect to a 2.4 network there. And then you can also hardwire into your uh, local area network, your router, um, via an Ethernet cable. Like I said, I'm going to do via USB in this video. Click Next. Uh, again, power on printer and connect the cable. So my printer is powered on. We finished through the ink um, process. Uh, ink loading of the new setup and we'll go ahead and get our USB cable um, connected. So I'll just hop over here, open up our USB cable, took all the packages away for now. And ultimately the, your USB or the um, uh, Ethernet connections are right here up under the panel. They're in the same location, right up under this little lid. They're right next to each other. Rounded side down. And you can route the cable. There's a little groove in here. We can neatly route it and then you just put your cover back on. Wire that over and connect to our computer. So I've got it plugged in. Assuming it's going through the detection process here. There's Megan from Sawgrass. And uh, so it did detect, and I've got the finish button down here. So oh, you cannot see that. Let me switch back over. There we go. So it did do the detection process once I plugged in. And we'll just click finish here. And now I do see our print manager is starting. Uh, it's got a new driver version that's flagging me that it's available. Um, actually, this is for the 800, so I'm just going to click no here for now. I'm not concerned about connecting that at the moment. Congratulations, you've installed SPM. Um, okay, so here is the update for uh, the 500 itself. So it's got given me the current system version is 1.2, new system version 3.2. So we'll go ahead and update the firmware on the printer itself. Click update. So depending on uh, when you get your printer that may or may not uh, be the case. It, it may or may not flag you for that. Um, or there could be different versions that are available at the time of your install. Um, Showing here this can take up to 10 minutes. So depending on how long this actually takes I may go ahead and just speed up the video. Alright, so now that we've reached 100%, you see it has here this message of quick finish once your printer returns to the ready state. It is going through a, a restart process right now and uh, I believe loading in that new version of the firmware that's available. So we'll wait on it to do its thing. You can kind of probably hear it in the background a little bit there. On the display there, it's just listed as a uh, please wait is what it's showing on the front of the printer at the moment. Alright, 
So now it is showing in the ready state on the front panel, just as the picture shows. I'll click finish. And currently no sort of other indicator that we're good to go. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is again just because the, the previous versions of printers that I've got is listed for the 800 here. So I'm going to click no on that. All right, so we've got message here at the bottom. Oh, it's behind my window here, but it's showing that the uh, print manager is ready, and uh, our printer is ready to go, ready to print. Um, I'll likely uh, provide some other videos uh, separate from this one on utilizing SPM, uh, printing with SPM, and uh, and things of that nature. So hopefully this helped in terms of the general basic setup. Really easy process to get the inks installed, get it powered on, and then physically connected, uh, as shown in this video via. USB. And um, again, hopefully this helps. And um, we'll see you guys again soon. Take care.